What's happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be assembling the pistons, the rods, the rings. We're going to get it all into the engine, get it all turned over, make sure it's nice, talk it down to spec, check clearances, blah blah blah. Loads to go through. I've got everything clean so it's absolutely immaculate. So the rods, the cups, the bearings, the back of the bearings, the bolts, the pistons, the pins, you name it. Everything is immaculate. Uh, I've also got some stuff ready, so ALP assembly loop for the bolts engine assembly loop for just lubrication, some mineral oil, and that's purely just to lubricate the bores and that. Uh, piston ring compressor, some tools to help this torque wrench. So first things first, you've got to get the pin locks in the pistons, and then what you do is you hit subscribe, because you're obviously going to be missing out stuff if you don't. And I'll do that on all four, because it's a right finicky mess, and then just get the pin locks around so the opening is 180 degrees from the little cut out there, and then we'll get the pins in. Right, the locks are in, so let's get the pins looped up and let's get them on the pistons. So just a quick one about rod orientation. Now, OEM Fitment has the bearing tang on the leading edge of the crankshaft rotation. Now, I was taught years ago by a seasoned engine builder that it's better to have the bearing tang at the rear, so therefore the exhaust side. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. My bearing tang will be facing rear. It literally does not matter, though, because this is a non-tapered rod. Uh, it's a non-tapered uh, fitment bearing, so it shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. So even if you mix them up, it will not make any difference. But for uniformity, you should try and keep it the same. OEM is leading edge. I'm going to go trailing edge. If anyone knows any exact science as to why that is, then feel free to give us a comment. Let us know. But uh, my tongues will be facing the exhaust side. <laughs> So pin locks again, 180 degrees from the little notch. Make sure they're clipped in nice. Time to get the rings on the pistons, so I'll start with the uh, oil scraper ring. The first thing, I'll just lube all this up with a little bit of uh, mineral engine oil. A little word about ring gap and orientation. Now, I'm not Engine Builder 101, so hopefully this isn't coming across. This, is, this isn't like how, you, how I think you should do it. This is just how I'm doing it. And there's a few things that I don't go you know, with the OEM way, and ring gap orientation is one of them. And I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here, I just follow the GE instructions. So my oil scraper and two control rings, they'll be 120 degrees apart, as per the diagram, which I'll put on the screen. Uh, and then the secondary and top compression ring, they'll be 180 degrees from each other. in the block time. So before each one goes in, just got to make sure the crank is round to bottom dead centre on that cylinder, just to make sure that when you put the rod down, you don't actually contact the journal, because the last thing you want to do is hit that little bad boy. You just have to have oily hands for this, doing this as well. You just got to accept you can have oily hands, because you can't wear gloves doing this type of stuff. Like. You just can it, lad, I tell you. Right, so the piston's all clamped up, and you just got to make sure that you can see where your middle intake valve cutout is, and that's got to go to the front of the engine, because that's where the intake valves are. Uh, and then we'll just lower it down nice and gentle. Wish us luck. And there she goes. Sweet. 
Right, so number one rod and piston combo is in the block and I've got my number one big end at bottom dead center. So now I'm gonna uh, bring the piston and rod up to meet the big end. We'll get the cap on and we'll tighten it down with some plastic gauge in and we'll check what the big end clearance is. Now, I know what the big end clearance should be, so I know what I'm aiming for, but we'll be able to test it with plastic gauge just to double check. Plus, we'll be doing some clearance and checks. Now, because this is a stroker motor, um, I'm pulling the piston assembly further down the cylinder, so therefore there might be a problem with clearance on the oil squirter on the bottom of the cylinder. And it's only by doing these checks that we'll find out. So, let's get on with it. Actually takes a bit of effort just to make sure the crank doesn't move while you do this as well and some people put blocks down the side of the engine I just find that if you pull in line with the crank then you don't have a problem it's when you try and pull against the crank where then the crank will move it's as simple as that anyway let's get this cracked off oh and I went to 55 foot pounds again remember like in the rod video so 55 foot pounds and we're laughing so let's bash this off So the oil clearance, if you remember from the rod video, was on number one, it was at 0 0.05. So, so 0 0.05, looks absolutely spot on to me that, 0 0.05. So the oil clearance on number one is exactly what I thought it would be, so I'm really happy with that. I'll get the plastic gauge cleaned off that big end journal, we'll get it cleaned out with the bearing, uh, and then we'll fully lubricate up that big end, uh, and then we'll torque it down properly, and then that'll be it done. I'll then look at spinning the engine and we'll try out the clearance issue for the squirter. Well, that's the crankshaft spinning nice and free. You get that lovely, lovely little bit of sort of scrapey type resistance from the piston rings. It's like very uniform. It's, it's really nice. But I am. Um, I've got no clearance issues from the bottom of the piston on the oil squirter, so them little cutouts on the G pistons are doing the job. Looks pretty good. Spot on, spot on. One last little thing. Remember on the crankshaft video, I checked the rod axial clearance and I had it at 0 0.14. So let's have a quick look at that. Me 13 and a half goes in between the rod and the crankshaft. And um, me 0 0.15 doesn't doesn't go in. So without a doubt, rod axial clearance on number one is spot on 0 0.14. What I thought it was. It's really really nice to check all this and just have it all come together. It's really really nice actually. But anyway, that's the rod in, the bearing, oil clearance check, the rod axial clearance check, the oil squirter clearance check, and it's done, 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 done. Now we're just doing number two, three, and four. That's the pistons and rods in. Couldn't have went any better, really, to be honest. It, uh, no problem whatsoever. The, the best part about all of it is getting to check, like your big end clearance, uh, you know, your rod axial clearance, and obviously for a stroker motor, the all important oil jets or the oil squirter clearance as well. And there's no problems with these GE pistons. Absolutely mint. Two liter stroker motor. Done it, mate. Done it. <laughs> 
I'm really chuffed about that. I've never built a stroker motor before, so to see the bottom end go together so well and the oil skirt a problem, well, not be a problem, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm chuffed about it. Obviously, if you went, you know, like an ALH TDI crank, then chances are you might run into oil skirt a problem. So I think I've seen that before, but uh, not for me. That's uh, spot on. I'm, I'm really, really happy to send that bottom end, and I'm sure it'll uh, be spot on. But there's actually loads more to do, so I'm going to dial pin the crank. We've got to get me trick INA sump, uh, oil pump casings on. Got to, got to get me awesome JNL racing head slammed on there, time the lot. But literally, next few videos, this thing will be together. And Christ, I'll have to think of some more content then, won't I? Bloody hell. Anyway, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.